so did are you all seeing the PowerPoint now? Okay, yes. I'm going to take away gallery view and just go to speaker view and um, yeah, move my face up a little higher. And uh, yeah, this GIF, I love GIFs. Um, I am not terribly tech savvy. You might have gotten that from me. And yet, I am tech savvy enough and I love gifts. Um, I also discovered, um, I also just, uh, I was creating my PowerPoint yesterday and I go, hmm, I wonder if I can put Bitmoji on there. And you can see that Bitmoji looks a little bit like me, not too much. Um, this is the agenda for this week. We just wanna acknowledge that this is a strange way to meet. I want you to meet each other. Um, I want you to get familiar with Canvas and how to work on Canvas, and I want to introduce a class topic. That is what we are doing this week. Not, not a huge agenda. Most of the time, I jump right in, but you know what? Online learning is different. Um, how many of you, I mean, like, what was your experience like um, when your campuses shut down last spring. Um, anybody? You can raise your hand or you can just um, unmute yourself. What was it like? I know like for mine, we didn't have set times for any of the classes. So like since I was like the seniors, they let everyone drop their classes if they didn't want to take it and didn't need it to graduate. So like I could have just had like a single class that I was taking and then have it like my teacher would post it on Google Classroom and then like have office hours, but that'd be like the entire interaction with the class. Oh, that's Twan. Mine was really abrupt. It was um, it started pretty much the week of spring spring break. So we thought it was just going to like blow over and then school was going to resume. So there was like nothing in the beginning. But once COVID started to really blow through the teachers started to decide like, okay, we're gonna to need to assign stuff because it was, it was AP test season, right? So we were all cramming online. So it was like really brutal for the testing. But yeah, using Google Classroom, it was like Monday through Friday classes, but there wasn't any like regular Zoom meetings for anything. It was all online. Yeah. Anybody else have a different experience? Um, for me, it just generally came down to uh, the teacher would just send out an email saying, here, do this, and we wouldn't really ever meet on Zoom. It was just kind of us to fend for ourselves because most of, we were mostly through uh, the semester, so we just kind of finished it out. Um, most people just were already guaranteed a grade, so people did work if they wanted to. Ah. Pretty much. Well, this is going to be a little bit more formal than that, and... You're here at San Diego State. Um, Amaru, did you have something you wanted to share? Oh, I was just gonna say my experience last semester because I had been going to Mesa College when the quarantine started, but they pretty much just transitioned to like Zoom classes and everything was already on Canvas, at least my classes. So it wasn't too bad of a transition, but it was mostly, yeah, just like everyone figuring out how Zoom works and all of that. But yeah. I was already teaching online classes at San Diego State, and so I thought it would be seamless since they were already online, but, you know, like, people were super traumatized. Um, it was very scary to have campuses shut down. A lot of my students had to move because they were living on campus, and um, I also teach at Southwestern College, and it was... It was crazy. My class went from 25 students down to 15 just because students didn't have computers or internet. They were used to doing that on, in their homes. And so, I mean, it was just, um, it was pretty tough. And this has been a very, very strange um, spring and summer um, in that, you know, like we have a pandemic, we have disease, um, we have civil rights protests that are calling attention to things that have been 
happening in our nation for a long time. Um, we have this awareness of inequity in our country where some people um, have medical insurance, some people have jobs, and other people are kind of scrounging um, for, you know, like, how am I, you know, like, how am I going to pay rent? And so it's raised attention to different classes in America. And so we're all dealing with this on some different level. And um, so I want to acknowledge that. I want you to meet each other, get familiar with campus, introduce class topics. I have already said all of that. Um, just a few Zoom rules. Um, let me take care of myself, put myself off the screen. Um, whenever you log on to Zoom, you're going to come into a waiting room, and I will admit you. Um, some um, people had difficulty with Zoom bombers last, some faculty had difficulty with Zoom bombers last spring, and so every classroom, um, the, every class that I have, and I teach three um, classes that were supposed to be face-to-face, -face, um, they all have a unique classroom. Um, you can choose to use your video or not. Honest, I like to see your faces, but I understand sometimes you just don't want to show your face, and I get that. I, I think I mentioned in the syllabus that I took spent the summer taking classes on teaching online, and in addition to the classes that had face-to-face -face elements, I also attended a ton of workshops, and there were some times where I just thought, I don't want anybody to see me. And so I made myself disappear. Um, make sure you mute yourself when somebody else is talking. But if you have something to say, um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, at the bottom of the page, you can click on chat and you can send messages. And I will see them. They will pop up. If you have a question, you can ask it there. And I will probably pause. Um, and answer it. Um, that's how it would be in a class. I would just say, if you have a question, ask it. Um, alternatively, there is um, an icon at the bottom where you can raise your hand by clicking on raise hand, and um, then I will call on you and you will be able to um, do that. Um, but before we get into everything, I do want to um, do this land acknowledgement that was um, prepared for San Diego State University. Hoka, Noskano Nechihi. I'm the travel liaison of San Diego State University. And I'm now going to read the Kumeyaay land acknowledgement. We stand upon a land that carries the footsteps of millennia of Kumeyaay people. They are a people whose traditional life ways intertwine with a worldview of earth and sky. In a community of living beings, this land is part of a relationship that has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced the Kumeyaay people to the present day. It is part of a worldview founded in the harmony of the cycles of the sky and the balance and the forces of life. For the Kumeyaay, red and black, represent the balance of those forces that provide for harmony within our bodies, as well as the world around us. As students, faculty, staff, and alumni of San Diego State University, we acknowledge this legacy from the Kumeyaay. We promote this balance in life as we pursue our goals of knowledge and understanding. We find inspiration in the Kumeyaay spirit to open our minds and hearts. It is a legacy of the red and black. And it's a land of the Kumiyai. Here, Khan, my heart is good. In your womb, in the past. So, a little bit about me. Um, I've already shared a little bit about me. Um, I shared that I went to San Diego State. I had a French major because I planned to be a French teacher. And I had an English major because I liked creative writing. And that gave me that opportunity. 
um, I ended up not teaching French and not becoming a creative writer. Instead, I started having children and I ended up homeschooling my children. And so all, none, of my, none of my kids went to school, oddly enough. Um, also, oddly enough, all my kids who are now adults work um, for public schools. So I have one daughter who's a um, social worker um, a school social worker at a high school. I think she's at Mount Miguel, but I can't remember where she is. Hmm. I have a son who's a special education classroom aide, and I have a daughter who taught at High Tech High for five years um, and is now getting her PhD in educational leadership. So I value education. Um, I started at Mesa College, transferred to San Diego State, and yeah, here I am. Um, a few things you should know about the way I view writing and the way I view education. Um, I think writing is hard. I think it's one of the hardest things we do because we wanna take ideas from our heads and put them into words on a piece of paper so that somebody else can see who we are, um, or what we're thinking. And that's hard because these ideas to paper uh, don't always translate well. And so, so we write, we revise, we write, we revise in order to get the ideas down. And that's hard. It's hard for me. And I assume it's hard for most people. And, and so my philosophy of teaching is that I want you to try something. I want you to write. I, I want to give you feedback. I want you to seek out feedback from other people. Um, to refine, to hone, to, um, to become more confident in your writing and more skilled in your writing. And I believe that we are always learning more about how to write. Um, just randomly, I will tell you more and more about myself as we go, because um, I can't help but talk about myself. By the way, I, I don't know if I mentioned, this is Baltimore behind me. Um, you'll see on videos, um, I'll often use a green screen because randomly my son last March, my oldest son lives with us right now. And um, I said, I wish I had a green screen. And he says, do you want one? And so this is during the, you know, like two weeks into um, COVID, and I go, ah, it probably won't come until after, and then we'll be back in school in the fall. And he goes, ah, I'll just order it. it. Took a month to get there, and obviously, I am still using it. So that's enough about me. Um, I'm going to put you into um, breakout rooms, and I want you to introduce yourself to um, a few people. Um, that'll be in your breakout room. Um, obviously your name, um, where you're taking this class. And so I imagine that some of you are in San Diego. Um, I imagine that, you know, like some of you are in another state. Some of you may be in another country, um, but just where you're taking the class. Um, your major, if you've declared, or a possible major, and then one interesting or not so interesting thing about you. Um, what do I mean? It's sort of like, um, I have eaten camel, true story. I was in the carnivore cafe in Nairobi and um, they served camel. They also served ostrich, but that's less exciting. Um, students have shared things like, one student shared that she had 27 brothers and sisters. Um, same dad, different moms. It was every year they have a family reunion and there'll be like over 100 people there. Um, that was exciting. Um, it might be that you play guitar or that you swim competitively or um, you'll come up with something, okay? So let's stop share and let me put you into um, breakout rooms and um, OK. 
Okay, there are 29 of you. So let's do eight breakout rooms, okay? You're gonna be in there for about three minutes. Um, somewhere, you, you know, you'll get an invitation to join. You just click join, and then you will get a warning that you have 60 seconds left and um, finish up your conversation, and then you can exit, or you will be forced out of those breakout rooms, okay? So there you go. Open rooms, and um, you can take those invitations as soon as you get them. Hey Google, set timer for two minutes, 30 seconds. And we're all back, almost. Just a couple more people on their way back. OK, everybody's here. So. Um, what did you learn? Um, what was the most interesting story that you heard? Just share the name and um, what you learned about someone. Uh, Derek works at In and Out. Awesome. I love In and Out. Um, where's Derek? 
I know. It, we have so many Hello. people like yeah. Do you like it? How long have you worked there, Derek? Heck no, no. Um, I've been working there for just over a year. Um, I haven't even touched any of the food yet. I'm not a high enough level. But uh, if you want to stop by, I'm at the Kearney Mesa location. So okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> no free <Yay>. burgers, though. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, something else interesting. That's all we got. Is Derek works at In and Out? Um, okay, Andy. Tuan is the tallest in his family, and he's six two. <laughs> okay, that's pretty tall. Um, are you significantly taller than other people, Tuan? It's pretty close. Before I like grew up, it was my cousin, and he was like six six one. And then all of a sudden, during like one Thanksgiving uh, Christmas reunion, I just had like a massive growth spurt, and then I just like passed everybody up. Okay, um, I am the shortest person in my family, um, at almost five feet tall. So, yeah, just did not get any other. Um, something else, something that you thought, oh, that's interesting. Nobody plays like, um, piano. is that your, your cat? Oh, this, um, oh, it's a dog. <laughs> this is, uh, this, sorry. Um, I have two chihuahuas. Um, this is Diego. And you will no doubt see Diego. They just will randomly jump up in my lap when I'm in meetings. Um, if he stays in my lap, he's gonna be really upset when I start touching the keyboard again. Um, yeah, um, this, is, this is our world. You probably have pets that jump in your laps too. So, um, all right, so um, back to Back to share screen. Um, this, this is what RWS 220 is about, and that's the class you're in. Um, we're going to think about critical thinking, reading, and writing. Um, we're going to focus on the rhetoric of written arguments by exploring theories and practices related to learning to write and the tutoring of writing. Um, writing, paying attention to structure, cohesion and rhetorical conventions, but we're gonna emphasize those theories and practices related to learning to write and the tutoring of writing. And that means that we are going to think about um, why we write, what holds us back from writing, um, how we can learn to write better, how we can help others learn to write better. I mean, you're looking at a picture of um, some of the tutors from um, San Diego State's Writing Center. They've all graduated now. And, um, and you're also looking in the bottom left picture, that's my daughter. And she was a tutor um, in her senior year of high school. She tutored for a high school in San Diego. And it's actually what got her um, her first teaching job for High Tech High, is she had a lot of experience tutoring. Um, this was after she graduated from college. She went straight into teaching at High Tech High. And she actually got her credential through that. Um, and when I say tutoring changes lives, um, because this is um, the rhetoric of writing and the tutoring of writing, this is the name of the course. Um, tutoring changed, um, um, oh, I'm just looking at these pictures of, of students that I know. It helps with employment or career goals. It helps you develop communication and leadership skills. It builds confidence in your ability to make a difference. 
Um, it gives improved knowledge of learning, studying, and test-taking techniques, and it strengthens your awareness of resources available in the community. But more than that, it changes lives because it not only changes your life, but it helps you change other people's lives by giving confidence in writing. And uh, that's a lot what we're going to focus on this semester is um, how we can help people, ourselves and others, learn to write confidently. Um, you saw that I have um, sort of a subtitle if you've read the syllabus, and it's this, Raise Your Voices, Language, Identity, and the Writing Center. Because I believe that tutoring empowers students to speak through their writing. So as we tutor, we give people the ability to raise their voices. And we learn to raise our voices too. It gives us a voice to speak. And I think that that's important. I think that we all have something to say. I think we all have something um, powerful to say, but we may not have the courage to say it. Um, I, in the syllabus, I quoted Kathy Kang. This is Kathy Kang you're looking at right now. And she issued a declaration, a request, a warning, an invitation to raise our voices. And this is what she wrote. And it really resonated with me as I was preparing for this class. She says, you might feel like you're too young or too old. You might be a woman. You might be a person of color. You might identify as LGBTQIA. You might have a disability or a chronic illness. You might be an immigrant or undocumented. You might feel like your experience isn't universal enough to be important or even acceptable. And she says, I want you to know that you have a voice and the world needs to hear, see, and experience it. And I want to issue that same declaration to you as a student in this class. You have a voice no matter who you are. And I want you to remember that as we begin tutoring in this class. Um, I want you to remember that the people, the other students that you work with in this class, they have a voice. And you, as a tutor, because we'll be doing a lot of tutoring the students in this class, um, your role when you are tutoring, the peer tutoring that you'll do in this class, is to empower somebody else to speak. A little more about how we're going to function in this class. Um, sometimes we're going to work synchronously, meeting together on Zoom, and sometimes we're going to work asynchronously, and you're going to engage with students and me about material and course concepts on Canvas. Um, synchronously means at the same time, and asynchronously, asynchronously means not at the same time. There actually is a word for this. And over the summer, as I was thinking, you know, like, how do I want this class to work? Some of the professors in RWS are teaching classes like this one asynchronously. So everything is on Canvas. And um, I don't think anyone is doing everything totally synchronously. Um, but uh, last week I learned a word and um, it's chrono hybrid. So it's sometimes synchronous and sometimes asynchronous, and that's what that is. I was very happy to have a word for it. Very great for, grateful for that. We're also going to be doing um, project-based learning. Um, project-based learning asks real-world questions, and you're going to be asking how are language and identity intertwined. Um, Kathy Kang named a lot of different identities. And um, you might share some of those identities, but there are other identities as well. 
And the claim that we're going to be making in this class is the way we speak, the way we view the world, and our identities are linked in many ways. Um, and so we want to ask, how are they intertwined? And how is that link between language and identity? How does it give each person a unique and valuable perspective on the world? Obviously, um, my identities, my experiences shape the way I view the world. They shape the way I experience the world. And so um, that is going to come out in the stories that I tell. Um, yeah, in the stories that I tell. And so the third question that we're asking is how can writing centers and the tutoring of writing help students give students the confidence and help them raise their voices and speak up? Um, another goal we have is this is the university goal to craft well-reasoned arguments, analyze a variety of texts, situate discourse, that is conversation, with social, generic, cultural, and historic contexts, and assess the relative strengths and arguments and supporting evidence. Um, let me go back to this slide. Um, I said project-based learning. Project-based learning means that we're asking real world questions, but it means we're gonna do projects related to that. We have two main projects that we're gonna be doing this semester. One is you're gonna write a literacy narrative and um, your identity is gonna enforce or, or shape what you write about. And um, when you think about literacy, you might think about reading and writing, but I wanna expand literacy to a term um, that you'll hear more about this semester, and it's multiliteracy. That there's more than one, well, reading and writing is, reading is being able to understand what is being communicated, and writing is communicating what you understand. But you know that there are more ways to read or understand communication. And there are more than one way to communicate it. It's not just reading words on a page. So we might read through media. We might read um, through, you might be able to read an accounting ledger. You might be able to read traffic signs. Those are different types of literacy. You might be able to read images. And if you can also create images, then, um, you can communicate that way. And so your literacy narrative might be on reading and writing, but it might be on a different literacy. We're gonna take all those literacy narratives and you're gonna work in groups to support each other, give each other feedback on revision. And so in your groups, you're gonna be seeing the same papers and different versions of the same papers. And you're gonna support each other in the revision. And I will be supporting that too. And we're gonna take all our literacy narratives and we're gonna turn them into a book that um, I suppose you could get it printed if you wanted, but, um, but just really it's just for us. Um, you're also going to do um, some research on how tutoring helps students raise their voices, um, particularly marginalized students, but, um, but all students, how it gives them the confidence to speak up. And so your research um, we will do together. We will build an annotated bibliography um, that identifies the arguments in the research and analyzes how that's communicated and evaluates the evidence in that research. And then you will eventually create your own argument 
Um, and we will turn that into you will work in groups again to revise, support, and you will, as a group, either turn that into a magazine or we will just take everything and bump it into a book with various chapters. Um, those are the two main projects. And of course, you're going to do a lot of other writing in this class. Um, small assignments um, to talk to each other, um, to communicate with each other, to get to know each other. Um, I belong to a Facebook page and um, somebody posted, oh, I have to have my students see, I have to be able to see my students' faces because otherwise, on Zoom, otherwise, how will I get to know them? And I posted back is like, the way I get to know my students best, whether it's a face-to-face -face class or an online class, I get to know them through their writing because students write and they communicate who they are. They communicate what they care about. They communicate their experiences. And I think that's how we get to know each other in class is through our writing and that's how one of the key ways you're going to get to know the students in this class but also me and how i'll get to know you so every week we're going to have the same schedule on monday you'll begin the canvas content this is the asynchronous content we'll meet at 11. on tuesday you continue the canvas content on Wednesday, we meet at 11, and any homework that's due on Wednesday is due that night, 11.59 um, p.m. It'll normally be a short homework assignment, although a draft of a paper that you've been working on, that might be um, due then also. Thursday, short homework assignment, normally a discussion board post on what you've been learning and reading over the course of the week. Nothing's due on Friday, but on Saturday, the rest of the homework is due and the next week's Canvas page will open up when you finish. So we'll complete this, complete this. It'll just be the same thing. Homework assignments due Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Once we start meeting in groups, we'll have one Canvas meeting a week, only one because I will be meeting with the groups um, to give you feedback on what you're doing and help guide you and support you. So that way you'll get to know me better, but you'll also get to know um, the other students better. So any questions about the schedule? Um, yeah, Derek. The only thing, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Perfect. Okay. Um, the only question I have is that on the schedule for uh, Friday, there's a time slot. Does that mean we'll be meeting in, in a Zoom meeting on Friday as well? We will not. Um, and I should have clarified that because um, like when you signed up for a face-to-face -face class and we all thought it was going to be, well, no, by the same time you signed up for classes, we knew. Um, Friday's class slot is reserved for asynchronous work. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about the schedule? Hello? Yeah, Twan. Sorry, could you say that one more time? My internet was acting sketchy and I couldn't catch that last bit about Friday. So Fridays, you'll notice on this schedule, nothing is scheduled for Friday. And the reason for that is I wanted to reserve Friday for asynchronous work. Um, I find that online discussions, um, we will do some really good work in collaborative discussions in our Zoom meetings. But I've noticed that generally speaking, it's five or six people talking. If we were in a face-to-face -face class, I just call on people. Almost everybody will talk at some point in a 50 week, 50 minute session. But that's harder to do on Zoom because we have so many, you know, like we have delays on Zoom. Um, we have internet glitches like Tuan just experienced. And so I think some of the best discussions we'll have 
will be actually on Canvas or in conferencing that we do on can you know like on Zoom in smaller groups. So, any other questions? Okay. So if you're re registered with SASE, that's the Student Ability Success Center, um, please let me know about any accommodations that you have. If you're a student athlete, if you're gonna miss class due to religious holidays, if you're struggling with Canvas, let me know. If there's anything going on that could affect your schoolwork, please let me know. Um, and I do understand that, um, that could happen. Um, I've had students um, last spring, I had some students, and over when I was teaching over the summer, I had students that came down with COVID and um, that definitely impacted their schoolwork. I tried, tried to stay in touch with them. If there's anything that's going on, um, family issues, please message me um, on Canvas or email me directly and we can begin dialoguing about, you know, like how we can negotiate um, what that is. Um, communication is key, probably even more so. Another thing I wanted to mention is that writing center visits are required in this class. Um, only two of them. Two visits required in September, and then you can earn up to 10 extra credit points for visits in October, November, and December for a total of 30 extra credit points. And we're on a plus minus system, so 30 extra credit points definitely changes your grade. So definitely changes your grade. So um, I also have office hours on Mondays immediately after class, and on Wednesdays immediately before class. And um, office hours are an opportunity to get clarity on off assignments, to ask questions you didn't feel comfortable asking in class, to get to know me, my expectations, um, or you know, like to show me a paper and get my feedback on that. Um, I know professors can seem intimidating. I, I don't think I'm intimidating, but I have had students tell me, think that you are and I go oh um, but anyways I am human like you are and um, I teach because I like students and I value student success and so um, definitely come see me you can make appointment there will be a module on canvas um, by the end of today that does that and um, so stop share. Um, we have just a couple of minutes left. Do you have any questions for me um, before we close out and I eliminate this meeting? Um, yeah, Derek. I don't have a question. That was probably just left over from before. Uh, I don't yeah. know how to I, lower your hand. I and I can't do it unless you're on. I'm on. Um, the gallery view. Um, yeah, Derek, raise your hand again. No. No, no. Yeah, I'm just trying to click it to see if I can lower it or anything. It yeah. probably just goes away with time. Um, maybe, maybe not. Things I don't know. So anybody else? Um, uh, yeah, Andy. Yeah, on the schedule on Monday, it said start Canvas or start Canvas work. Does that mean just start like, or I guess the modules for that week? Yes, yes. Okay. I think. I think a lot of you have already started the getting started things and then there'll be more um, class related content and um, and some of you have already started that actually that opened right before we started class so I don't think any of you have been on that yet so okay it's 11:49, and class is officially over and um, have a great rest of your day and welcome to San Diego State. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.